What is a memory? From our point of view, it certainly feels like our memories are stored away in some filing cabinet in the corner of the brain, waiting to be called upon. As we will learn throughout this series, though, intuitive notions of brain function like this one rarely hold up under scientific scrutiny. Over the past half century or so, the unlikely combination of a straight-talking Canadian, an overconfident brain surgeon, and a giant sea slug have begun to reveal the true nature of memory, a process far more intricate and fragile than we could ever suppose. In 1949, a Canadian scientist named Donald Hebb theorized about the structural basis of memory. Knowing that everything we experience, our thoughts, feelings and perceptions, are the product of particular patterns of activity among the cells in our brains, Hebb suggested that these patterns could be stored not in the cells themselves, but in the connections between them. He suggested all those years ago that the connections between cells would grow stronger when they are activated in unison, embedding specific traces that could be more readily reactivated. Another substantial leap forward in our understanding of memory occurred in 1953 when an unfortunate neurosurgical patient, Henry Mollison, had large portions of brain tissue removed to cure epilepsy. To the surprise of his doctors, Mollison, although cured of his epilepsy, was unable to form new memories after the surgery, showing us that the areas of the brain removed must play an important role in the ability of the brain to store new information. Modern day neuroscience owes an incalculable debt to people like Henry Mollison, whose stories set the trajectory of brain research for decades to follow. Inspired by the case of Mollison, Eric Kandel, a researcher at the National Institutes of Mental Health, dedicated his working life to understanding how the brain stores memory. By training sea slugs to respond to different stimuli, Kandel and his team were able to observe what Hebb had postulated decades earlier. The ensemble of cells responsible for the slugs' responses was strengthening their connections and even forming new ones. This work won Kandel and his team a Nobel Prize in 2000 and laid the basis for our molecular understanding of memory today.